to the start of October's vlog. I hope to get some fish this month again. Also, I'd like to thank my extra subscribers. Um, obviously, last month's vlog was good enough to get me some extra subscribers. I said at the end I'd been stuck on 13. Well, as I speak today, 6th of October on 21. So, thank you. Hope you enjoy this one. It's 4:30 now. Um, I've hastily got the rods out. When I arrived at the lake, there was a big old storm brewing up. Just about got set up before we had some more rain. I mean, we've had four days of biblical rain. Um, the weekend was, as predicted, unbelievable rain, heavy winds. Surprisingly, not many fish got caught, not from people I know anyway. I thought a lot of fish would get caught at the weekend. Um, certainly, my son was fishing. I know when he woke up Saturday morning. His bivvy was flooded, so that's how much the lake had come up. He didn't have any, his mate he was with didn't have anything either. So um, we're here now. It's got here like, like normal, still working from home. Car was loaded, so 4.30 I'm in the swim. Finish at 4, I'm in the swim for 4.30. Had a couple of balls of bait already rolled up. I've got pellet, hemp and maize or corn been soaking for about five days now so the pellet's quite mushy so I made up some balls um, introduced a couple on that left hand spot to the snags tree that I normally fish later in the day and another couple on the right hand spot where I normally get earlier takes from put a couple of pouches of 12 mil boilers out as well on both spots there were some fish on the surface or just under it so I quickly just Flung one rod out on a zig while I set up the right hand rod. Put the right hand rod out on the spot with a little PVA bag like I normally do and a wafter on a KD rig. Nothing happened on the zig and I just fancy fishing that snag tree earlier. Bearing in mind we've only got two hours of daylight. The sun sets at 6.30 today so I'm figuring the fish might get in there a bit earlier than they normally do. So I quickly wound that rod in. I've put a pop-up on there on a 360 rig or spinner rig, whatever you want to call it. I mean, my only twist on that is I still put a bag on it. It's, in my head, you're feeding pellets out there, creating a feeding spot, and then you put a single bait out with no pellet around it. So I still make up a little PVA stick, leave a towel on it and pull that towel back through the swivel so as when you cast, in my eyes, as a fish is swimming over that bait, it's probably not even looking at the bait, it's looking at all the pellet that's just dissolving the PVA bag below it. And that definitely worked for me today because I cast it out, I was putting the hanger on the rod and yeah, the tip pulled round and I was straight into a fish. Didn't even have the unhooking mat set up, fortunately the net was set up. I do normally remember to set that up before I cast any rods out. And yeah, landed a scraper double, another one of those commons. You know, it might have gone 11 pound, but we call it 10 pound. I've said before, I don't weigh those fish. I'm still trying to get this 20 pounder out of here. I've had 56 fish now out of this lake since June. Still, well, I say I've not had the 20 pounder. I've not weighed one that was 20 pound. I think we did have a 20 pounder, but I didn't have my scales with me for some reason. But yeah, so as I say, the rods are out. I tend to sit here till probably 8.30 again. You know, I've come over here as light as possible. Even a brolly, I thought it's just a golf brolly. It's, uh, it'll do. We're only due to have some showers now, no heavy rain. So I'll just sit under the golf brolly. Wrapped up warm, got my coat, my coat's waterproof. Got my one piece on to keep me warm. Got wellies on because there's mud everywhere. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, catch up with you later on. Hopefully with a couple of fish on the bank, so uh, speak to them. Okay, <clears throat> six o'clock now, and um, just I'm not going to wrap the vlog up. I'll find a way to do it with a head torch later on, shine on me or something, because uh, still got two and a half hours before I'm going to pack up. But um, yeah, I'd had that one fish, uh, like I say, scraper double, 
and uh, amazingly the, the rods were I was convinced I was getting line bites because I was getting indications but nothing was turning into runs so I took the left hand rod off of that snag tree I'm still keeping putting bait on the snag tree but I literally flicked the rod out rod and a half length out in front of me and um, set the phone camera up video in the buzzers in the hope of getting a take uh, rods have been out there that rod had been out there about I don't know, under 10 minutes and then the bailiff came round and uh, that was quite interesting he checked my ticket and all the time he's checking it he's looking at the phone videoing and looking at the phone looking at me looking at the phone looking at me and I thought I'm not going to say anything if you don't ask and he didn't ask so I didn't say anything and then with that the heavens opened he ran off said right I'm off before I get too wet I quickly turned the phone off put the umbrella up and uh, literally that shower lasted two minutes and as the shower stopped and I put the brolly down the rod screamed off and uh, yeah a nice 16 pound common it's uh, weird it's already getting winter colours on it and again I've, I've videoed that and the video doesn't do the fish justice because it's got beautiful colours on it but um, I've actually got the video video in now the uh, rods and amazingly the right hand rod it videoed a semi tape that turned out to be a tench yeah the water's pretty cold I can't believe the tench is still feeding but there you go that's it so we had two carp and a tench two and a half hours to go I'll wrap the flog up with the head torch shining on me somehow and hopefully that comes out it can't be any worse than wrapping up in the car the other week so uh, yeah that's what we do stick with it hopefully we'll have a couple more fish and uh, if we can get another take on the video just before it gets too dark we will do I'll leave the camera video and see what happens okay speak to you later on So much for the, uh, there wasn't many much rain tonight, it's meant to be uh, 0.2 millimetres was all I was meant to have tonight. The rain started at 10 to 6, finished at 10 to 7. During that rain I had a screamer on that left hand margin rod, uh, sadly pulled out of that fish, but um, see you on the bank in the weekend, stay safe and thanks for watching. Morning, we're back on uh, Braxted on the res again. Um, not sure I'm meant to be here today. Um, the aim was to get here for six o'clock this morning and uh, get all set up in the dark and reap the rewards of that first hour where, of daylight where they definitely feed on this lake. Very unlike me, I overslept. I, um, it was a bit late leaving home. Got to the gates here at about quarter to seven and there was a big farmer's lorry with some plant on the back of it trying to get in but he didn't know the code for the gate so I put the code in for the gate and then you come to a second electric gate which should automatically open on its own and uh, that wouldn't open so went to the other side of the gate put the code in it wouldn't open so long story short the lorry driver made a few phone calls to the farmer and he told me there's another route into here a back route but it's locked and the farmer will let you in so I said I'll follow him and uh, yeah up Dale down Dale down this country lane round this country lane we come to a little village where the lorry now can't get round the corner because of all the the big plant on the back he jumps out he says oh sorry I've missed the turning so uh we reverse up, I manage to turn around, he reverses up even further, manages to turn around. Long story short, we get to the farmer's field and um, yeah, the farmer comes and opens the gate and lets us in that way. Um, hopefully someone sorts that gate out when it comes to going home, otherwise we won't be going home either. But um, finally got the rods out at 8 o'clock, um, 
fish showing in a swim and yeah on one spot I'm still gonna I'm gonna keep baiting it up I just think it's October the water's really cold it's really come up very high the water's the highest I've ever seen it on here so um, I'm hoping the fish will feed and uh, that said I was sitting here just after nine and fish are showing high up in the water and I was contemplating putting a zig out and then had a take on <laughs> on the rod that I was going to change to a zig so glad I didn't only a scraper I actually weighed it because someone said you need to weigh, weigh your fish you keep guessing weights and they think I'm underestimating my fish so uh, weighed it 14 pounds so um, yeah if I'd guessed it I probably would have went 12 to 13 so maybe I do underestimate my fish but I'd rather underestimate than over over estimate them so um, yeah we're going to sit here an hour into dark and see what happens certainly I think that first hour into darkness this time of year is a good time for a take so um, we'll see what happens hopefully I say it all the time still trying to get this 20 pounder out of this lake um, we'll see what happens if I have a couple of fish as the day goes on I'll update them I may video them I may try and get a run on on uh, video again um, may try and video the playing of the fish just to put a bit more action into the vlog so that's the plan for today we'll see how it goes see if we can catch a few fish um, yeah take it from there like I say there's fish showing I may put a zig out later on because they are still up in the layers so uh, we'll see what happens but I'll catch up with you later in the day Right, as I said, I'm going to wrap the vlog up now, simply because it gets too dark too soon. It's half past five now. Um, on seven fish now. Um, three 19 pounders. 19 2, which was one we videoed. A 1911 and a 1912. So um, I think I might need to check my scales. That elusive 20 pounder out of this lake is getting closer and closer. But um, hopefully my scales are correct I will actually check them when I get home tonight but yeah it's been an interesting day the runs have come uh, the smallies were apart the two runs and then lunchtime two runs in 15 minutes
afternoon, three runs in 20 minutes. Uh, one was a double take. Um, yeah, it seems to be the way an efficient tool. It's, I've always noticed it's a bit like that on here. And I quite expect just after dark to get two runs really quickly even. So um, it definitely fishes that way here. Just in the summer it seems to, uh, or warmer months, you pick up the odd fish through the day, but you do get spurts where they definitely feed. And I've seen similar patterns before. We fished um, years ago. Darren and I fished a little syndicate called Rochets. The amount of times when you woke up in the morning and spoke to people, there'd be takes at either end of the lake at pretty similar times at night. So something triggers that feeding pattern. We knew what it was we'd only go fishing at those times i guess but, um, there you go yeah another interesting thing was um i've changed the pellets i use recently i mean you've seen in my vlogs i do get through a lot of bait and um, it's just become unsustainable to put in those quantities at the cost of shops charge so um i've now gone to British Aquafeeds, I believe it's called, just buying copings uh, pellets. I mean, all fish farmers feed the fish on copings or coppings, whatever they're called. So you know they're good pellets, and by buying in bulk 50 kilos, for, well, no, 25 kilos for 35 pounds, so one pound 40 a kilo. If you go over 70 pounds, you order it's free, free shipping as well. So certainly more cost effective than. Um, buying five kilo bags and everything. Yeah, the point about the, uh, not only is the copings, you know, a cheap way of buying the bait, but the three 19 pounds I've had have all been crapping out that light coloured pellet. It's, uh, it's the coarse pellet I'm using. So, um, yeah, looks like a good change over to that pellet, saving me money and the fish are getting on it. So. Uh, a good investment so um, certainly know what October's got in store for me for my next trip because uh, I'm going up to the River Seven tomorrow I've, uh, it's Friday today it's uh, I've been keeping an eye on that river all week and even though down south we've had horrendous rain and terrible weather really which is why I haven't done a midweek session this week it's um, yeah up round Coalport Birmingham and everything not been too bad I've also looked at the next monitoring station up from there in Wales, Welsh Pool. And again, they've not had much water. The river's dropping all week there, dropping all week at Coalpool. So I think even if we had a deluge tonight in um, Wales, it wouldn't reach Coalpool tomorrow. So uh, that's the plan. Drive up there, see if I can nick another barbel. Um, yeah, it, it should, you know, if I said the other week, the rivers are fishing rock hard everywhere but there's always a chance you know it's the winter the water's cooling down the fish aren't stupid they know they need to feed up now for the winter so hopefully can get a couple of barbel tomorrow maybe some chub um, I may even take my um, drop shotting gear with me because there's some good perch in there uh, problem with that is there's also pike in there and uh, yeah, I'd probably lose it. It's only eight pound braid on the drop shot kit, but we'll see. So um, I'm going to wrap this up now. Hopefully, I can nick a, another couple of fish tonight. As I say before, I go home. If I do get that twenty pound, I will photograph it and I'll update the vlog tomorrow and mention it and uh, slip the picture in a bit. So that's it for now. Um, yeah, see you at the river tomorrow.
here we are on the River Seven at Coalport, as I said I would be yesterday. Um, let's wrap up yesterday. Um, I had one more take and it was dark. It was uh, literally everything was packed away and um, yeah, had a take. Long story short, 21 pound two ounce. But <laughs> unfortunately, the only picture I did was in the um, was in the unhooking mat. To be honest, if it wasn't for the flog, I wouldn't have bothered photographing it. Every, as I say, everything was packed away. I'd get the waistling back out, the scales back out, and everything because I was pretty certain it was a 20. And, uh, and then I just thought, I can't say on the vlog, oh yeah, I had a 20 and there's no picture. So the one picture I did take doesn't do it justice lying in the, in the unhooking mat. But yeah, 21 pound, two ounce it was. So um, finally got that 20 pounder out of um, Braxid. Will I keep going there? Um, yeah, I thought I wouldn't after I got a 20, but it's a bit late in the year to be learning another lake now so I probably winter I'll stay on there anyway up to today another good journey on up here um, I've put a time-lapse video on on the journey you see hardly any tra well, no traffic so uh, yeah really good journey here again um, walked along the river when I first got here just with my bait bucket and a catapult really trying to see what swim I wanted to go in and um, I've ended up back in the swim that I caught that nine and a half pounder in last time. I fished here, just past the bridge. Um, I fished. I've passed seven pegs on the way to this swim, and um, there's no one fishing at the moment down there. So I may wander down just with the rods and the net, and have the odd cast, speculative cast, into some of those swims. That boulder I stopped and looked at, or what I think is a boulder under the water that I stopped and looked at last time and thought, you know, a barber will definitely in the summer they'd be under there because that just creates um, oxygen, the water going over it, vortexing over it. Um, I did a little video today, it, it must be a huge boulder under there just by the way the waves that are coming over there are today. So um, I may go to swim up from there and just try and I may even fish that swim cast to the left of it let the um, feeder come round and hopefully drop just in front of that boulder but it will be a walk down there with a rod and net just one cast just to see um, what's happened today well yeah as I say I, I baited up I've got a um, an array of baits today I've got worms casters Obviously the normal pellets, little 12 mil boilies, um, corn and a, and a big bucket made up last night of pellet, smelly ground baits, fish meals, spice in there. There's a lot of human grade fenugreek and garlic in there to give it loads of pungent smell. And uh, yeah, mix it up last night with the water out of the water butter. So fed to swim up. Went back and got the fishing gear, fed to swim a bit more, put the rods out. Uh, the first rod that went out had only been out there half an hour. And uh, yeah, I had a take. And I've got to be honest, in the net, I thought I had a Barney Rubble, it really did. So I was uh, all excited. It's such a wide fish, not that long, but so wide. And uh, yeah, set the camera up, it's all set up, so the lometer's set up. So we can do pictures properly now, uh, today, unlike yesterday. And uh, yeah, it, actually it was £9.02 when I weighed it. But beautiful fish, dark colours I like. They're not always that dark brown, some of them are quite light. So that's my favourite type. And uh, to have that straight away is good. I mean, my plans are to just sit in this swim till midday and see what happens. I mean, obviously if I have a couple of fish, I will stay in here. but. The plan is just just stay here till midday and then go and have a wander up the river or down the river and uh, see see what's out there. Uh, the river's down, well it's down four foot from when we came last month in this swim. So I'm surprised how much flows on it and the other thing is it's crystal clear. So I've gone on four foot hook links today just to so everything's away from the feeder and everything. But anyway, that's enough waffling from me for now. 
um, I shall update the vlog later on as the day goes on. So see you in a bit, hopefully with another fish on the bank. Right, so we move swims now. Um, I did have one more take in that swim, but I lost that one. Just got into a, well, <coughs> snags or reeds, whatever it is out in the middle there. And uh, yeah, unfortunately the hook pulled, so um, moved up now. I mean, uh, sw I've never fished a swim before. The flow is a lot slower here, and um, but it's a gnarly little tight swim. It's, uh, I've struggled to get my rods out. Initially I only had one rod out, but I thought, no, I'll get the second rod out. It's, um, yeah, very tight, very slippery. There's a gap in the trees above me, which is the only route to... Uh, cast out. Um, I've got a nice little inside line here that I'm just going to keep baiting up as the afternoon goes on. It's yeah, quarter past one now. Um, I was going to say you have to be away off of here before six. You need to be off the road that leads to the river before dark which is ten past six the sun goes down. So um, I guess I've got about four hours now so I'm unlikely to move swims again. This is quite a walk from the car as well, this one. But um, we'll see what happens. It's, you know, it's fishing. <laughs> There's always a chance. Put the bait in there and hope the fish come along. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll keep fishing and uh, I'll probably update the vlog, I don't know, five o'clock, just as, um, really as I'm starting to pack up, I guess. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can nick another fish or two. Okay, well it's five o'clock now, so um, yeah, the, I mean it's cooled down, it's pretty cold in this uh, little swim here in the shade and everything. Um, fishing, yeah, good move here, it was, um, I haven't got anything on camera, it's such a tight little swim and uh, I haven't had anything, anything bigger than the nine pounder, so I haven't videoed or photographed any of those. Um, yeah, I've worked the swim really hard, really hard, literally that bucket of baits gone used it all now so um, constantly casting the two rods to exactly the same spot trying to give the same amount of loop in the line so the feeder would always land in the same place um, had a little chublet probably only eight ounces um, didn't even see the bite if I'm honest it's uh, just wound in to uh, recast them and it was on there so <laughs> don't really count that I guess um, had a barbel about six pound maybe maybe five pound um, but yeah nice fish good fight I mean it, it is weird with this four foot hook link your swim feeders out of the water just on the surface and you know the fish is still four foot under so uh, yeah interesting fights and uh, chub about four pound I guess so um, yeah that was good I mean the, the, the one thing that well really hurt today I had a well, the, you don't have screaming runs, there's no buzzers when you're barbel fishing. But the rod hooped over double, lifted into a fish, and it was just stripping line off the clutch while I was trying to play it. All the time I was playing it, you could feel grating, where it was grating along a boulder or some sort of snag under the water. And uh, yeah, sadly, the line parted before I got that one in. So, um, you know, as I always say, that's fishing, but. Yeah, I've had a good day, I'm happy. I've had two barbel, two chub. I've still probably got half an hour with the rods in the water. Um, hopefully I can nick one more, but even if I don't, it's, you know, I just love it. I was sitting here earlier and just thinking, you're down this valley, there's, there's no phone signal. There's no going on Twitter, posting a picture or liking someone's comments. It's absolutely nothing down here. You can't be disturbed by anyone's uh, phone calls. I've had the kingfisher flying up and down. Um, oh, little nudge there on the line. Sorry, yeah, I had the kingfisher going up and down all, all day. I've had a robin coming down here. It's just enjoyable, you know. You really are away from everything. So um, whether I'll get back again this year, probably doubtful. But just see, if we get a mild winter, I might get a trip in November. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I've enjoyed my day here today. Rest of October, um, I don't know what I'll do. Um, likelihood of getting out one evening, probably pretty remote because it's getting dark so early now. But um, never say never. 
next weekend what will I do I don't know I can't fish Friday I'm busy Friday um, yeah I don't know what I'm going to do yet uh, no doubt I'll be somewhere and, yeah anyway whatever you do um, stay safe and uh, I'll see you on the bank somewhere next week well good morning uh, you find me up on the reservoir again I'm going to wrap up October up here on the res um, been quite a lot of rain certainly yesterday and today's meant to get quite warm to be honest so um, I'll keep an eye on the water they may be up high later on so be a case of getting the zigs out again um, turn up is still dark I've got two rods out I'm in the usual swim just on spots that I know have produced in the past um, we'll see it's at the moment it's quite chilly but as I say the sun's meant to come out it's meant to warm up the odd fish is showing so we're in the right area I am the only person up on here at the moment so I can move swims if I see fish showing heavily elsewhere but for now I'm just going to stick it out here I've changed over to pop-ups now on spinner rigs it's just in my opinion this time of year too many leaves and crap and crud on the bottom so whilst the baits are still the same still krill baits um, they're on pop-ups introducing a bit less bait than I have done earlier in the year but still probably compared to some people baiting quite heavily but it's October they, as I've said before they should be feeding up I don't expect to catch as many fish as normal today but I would expect to catch some better stamper fish well, that's the plan um, obviously my challenge to myself on here this year was to catch a 20 pounder out of here which became hard work uh, ended up with 68 fish between June and now the end of October so the last time I came mid October 68 fish and a 69th one was there 2102 so uh, we finally did it so today if the wind dies down I've brought the tench rod with me uh, just grab my float box out of my barbel kit and I'll see if I can catch a carp on the float today um, hence why I'm baiting up a spot quite close in I mean as I say the, the water's up it was up last time it's up again so um, the spots are a lot deeper it's probably five foot just a couple of rod lengths out now so I'll keep trickling bait in there I've already seen small fish roaching out on there I mean that may be the problem I may float fish and just catch roach and rud but uh, we'll see as I say depending on the weather we'll try and catch a carp on the float today just to do something different and uh, yeah I'll update the vlog as we go along and, uh, hopefully with a fish or two Okay, so it's just coming up to midday now. Um, had a couple of fish. Had one literally just after I stopped recording. Well, I didn't even stop recording, so I just left the GoPro running. And um, yeah, it's a bit too dark, I think. I'll check probably when I get home. But it's a uh, 14.4 common, so um, that was on the left hand rod. Nothing happened there. It's, it's been really cold this morning. The sun's just coming out now. Um, that said I could see fish on the sur or near the surface up on the zig out but nothing on the zig then my right hand rod's gone which is always off of that just off of that bush um, I actually photographed that one because the camera's all set up just over 18 pound but quite nice winter colours on it common I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay here today obviously the clocks have gone back now so who knows, normally I would, as I've said recently I stay an hour into dark but that then means I'm driving home in rush hour so um, yeah I don't know, don't know how long I'll stay for. I'll wrap the vlog up just before it gets too dark to use the uh, camera really and uh, see if we've had any more by then. Okay, see you later. Okay, well it's 4.30 now, uh, I think I said earlier, sunset's at 4.50, so I'm uh, going to wrap this up now while I've still got some daylight. Um, yeah, I had three fish now, um, so one more since we last spoke, I think it was about £15. Um, had a tench as well, weirdly, 
the um, I mean the water is absolutely freezing I'm surprised how cold it is and the sun was took a real long time to come up the water's warmed up slightly since the sun came up but it's already gone down now so I'm um, going to sit it out for a I don't know maybe another hour and a half 6.30 so um, might, might nick another fish um, you probably won't know about it though because this is it racking up October's flog so um, I still think it's been a good month we've had some barbel we've had some chub obviously we've had carp um, really not sure what November has in store for me where I'll be fishing what I'll be doing um, we'll definitely do something probably more river fishing than lake fishing but maybe not we'll just see how the weather goes how the temperatures go and everything but um as I always say, thanks for viewing. Hope you've enjoyed this month again. Um, subscribers wise, we had a sudden rush, went from 13 to 21. And then I lost one of those subscribers, so back down to 20. So um, if you've enjoyed it, you don't subscribe and you have got a YouTube account, please do subscribe and then you'll get notifications each month when the new vlog goes on. So once again, thanks for watching, stay safe and see you on the bank in November.